What is going on guys? Brad Messersmith here of the Fantasy Golf Degenerates, back from the dead. I've been sick the last few days, so I apologize. This video is coming up a little bit later than it usually does, but we've got a ton of good, uh, good stuff to talk about today. Hopefully I don't uh, cough all over the video, but I will do my best. Um, so first and foremost, if you've already downloaded my expert model, I posted it, I believe Monday afternoon, it's possible that you've already downloaded the expert model and it has changed and it's changed somewhat drastically. So make sure that you go back into stats models, re-download the expert model of mine and recalculate your cheat sheet to make sure you get up to date info, the info I'll be using. So, um, <clears throat> couple of interesting tidbits today that came out in pressers of some of the the bigger golf names, including Rory and Spieth. This course is going to play a lot shorter than it seems on paper. Um, because of the elevation, it sounds like they're really hitting the ball out there um, pretty heavily. Uh, Justin Thomas posted something, I believe, on his Instagram showing a, uh, a drive that was 383. Um, Jordan Spieth mentioned that he had that setting on 70 degree weather. It was actually 80, so most likely the drive was even longer than that. So... <clears throat> course looks long or at least somewhat long on paper is not going to play as long as we think. Um, Rory McIlroy said in his presser that he was hitting an eight iron about 210. So all of that being said, originally I had long irons. Uh, I think the distance was 200 to 225 in the model. Scratch that. Um, Jordan Spieth in his presser said that the range from 100 to 150 is going to be relevant. Not a not a bomber's course at all, but more of a ball striker's course. He also says that green and regulations are going to be somewhat relevant. I don't have that here. Um, instead, I've chosen to use strokes gained, approach the green. But um, green and regulation, if you're making your own models, may be something you want to take into consideration knowing what Jordan Spieth thinks about the course. So... That being said, I've also got birdie or better percentage with a no-cut event. We've got four full rounds for every golfer we pick. Birdie or better percentage shows up on any any event, basically, in my stats models. It's even even more so this week going to be important. I've got it at a four, four weighting, and it is the highest weighting in my stats model. Um, also at a four rating, stroke, strokes gained approach the green, like we mentioned just now. DraftKings points gained in no-cut events. This is a relevant stat, but has to be... Uh, Taken with a grain of salt because there are some guys in the field that do not have this. I'm using 2015-2016 stats, so make sure to take note of the guys that do not have this stat. It could affect them in your stats models. Um, I'll, uh, I'll mention a couple of guys like that as we move forward. Um, strokes gain T to green always shows up in my models. It also has a three weight. And then the yardage ranges that we talked about just a bit ago. So um, definitely, I think, an interesting stats model. Interesting week because there is no course history. So if you look over at my ranks, I've got stats weighted at 70%, recent form at 30%, and 0% on course history. One little interesting tidbit that I think is useful to look at, I added all of the WGC into the course history. So I am looking at course history for all of the WGC events. I don't think that it should be taken into account into your models, but is definitely interesting to look at. You can see, if I scroll over just a little bit, you can see that there are some guys who seem to go beast mode in WGC events, including Rory McIlroy, who is the first guy I want to talk about. He consistently finishes top 10, top 5, all the time at these WGC events. I think he takes them with pride. He's talked about in past years the fact that WGC events should be held around the world. Well, here we are in Mexico. He is coming off an injury, so has to be taken a little bit with a grain of salt, but I expect Rory to come out and perform his best, and if he starts, he should make all four rounds, and I expect him to start. <laughs> Dropping down a little bit, Henrik Stenson, with the distance we talked about, I think is going to be hitting his three-wood a mile. Um, he's a guy who clubs down regularly as as we know it on re on normal courses. I expect the same to be the case this week. Um, he is coming off a long stretch of not playing, especially not playing in America. Um, granted, we're in South America, but um, has been playing overseas for, for some time now. So a little bit concerning there. I don't think I'll have Stenson in my cash lineup, but certainly makes an interesting GPP play. If you ask me, he will make quite a few of my lineups. John Rahm is a guy I really like for cash. Uh, he is one of those golfers that does not have the DraftKings points gained no cut event stat. In fact, he doesn't have many from last year because he was not on tour last year. But that being said, 
I've talked about this before, you should calculate models in 2016-2017 stats and 2015-2016 stats for this reason. If you calculate this model in 2016-2017, I suspect, I do not know for sure, but I suspect John Rahm will make it up to the top of the model, and uh, as such, I will be playing quite a bit of him. Sergio Garcia, for a lot of the same reasons, I really like. Um, it's kind of interesting to see that he is not so good from 100 to 125 in that range, but is pretty good in 125 to 150. Uh, I think this is a course where you're going to have to be really placing the ball and playing strategic strategically, and I think that plays to Sergio's uh, Sergio's advantage, so I will be playing quite a bit of Sergio. He will almost definitely be in my cash lineup along with John Rahm. <clears throat> Tyrell Hatton's a guy that I'm going to be really big on moving forward. He has been playing phenomenally, um, really been playing out of his mind. If you look at his recent form, he has a 4th, a 3rd, and a 13th. It is not the be-all, end-all. He has played a couple of WGC events, so there's a little bit to be said there. Um, because of the uh, the Lack of stats we have for him from last year. He's going to show up a little bit lower if you're using 2015-2016 stats, but I really like him as well. Francesco Molinari is a golfer who has been playing very, very well this year. I expect him to be hot well into the season. He's a golfer I'm going to be targeting regularly. Not a guy who shows up really drastically in statistical models just yet, but as we get deeper into 16 and 17, I think you'll see him show up near the top of a lot of a lot of models he's been a uh, top golfer overseas for many years um, if you play euro you're probably used to r rostering francesco molinari in the 10k and up range and uh this week in a tough field i think he, this uh this course will fit his game really well and he's got a chance to finish top 10 again jason duffner to me feels like a really great course play along with zach johnson both really good Iron players, uh, especially from shorter distance, they seem to be guys that just grind out courses regardless of, of what they are, really good distance players. Um, so I'm going to lump those two together a little bit, and both of them, I think, make cash options. Uh, I'm not sure they're the best cash options, but both of them are in consideration, and definitely for GPPs, I think they both need to be need to be on your radar. Uh, Brooks Kepka, I have a red circle next to because I will be fading Brooks Kepka until further notice. He recently changed to Mizuno Irons, which I want nothing to do with. Uh, just recently, it was it was uh, written that uh, Roberto Castro is also changed to Mizuno Irons, so I will be off of him as well moving forward. They will both make my do not play list until we see something, and Brooks is well on that list after some less than stellar performances over the past couple of weeks. Um, Pat Perez is on the opposite side of things. We have Pat Perez at 7,400. I am really bullish. You guys already know that Pat Perez is, is on my radar and will be until we see him really flop. Um, he, he just signed with PXG, although we found out that he has been playing PXG since the beginning of the year. Big surprise. Uh, given the, the results, he's been playing out of his mind. I think uh, we can expect the Pat Perez phenomenon to continue, especially with the recent signing of PXG. Jim Furyk and Matt Kuchar are both also kind of in the same camp. They're they're good value plays, probably cash options. I like Kuchar a little bit better for cash than Jim Furyk, um, but either of them are really good game managers, uh, wedge play or iron play specialists. Um, very very good in courses that are difficult Pete Dye, Pete Dye style courses. I think this course is going to play a little bit like a Pete Dye course with a little bit length, a little bit more length. Um, however, with altitude, I'm not sure how that's going to affect the length. Um, I don't expect it to be a factor as much. I think this will play a lot like a Pete, Pete Dye style course. And as such, I'm going to be taking Jim Furyk and Matt Kuchar. And last but not least, Danny Willett is one of the lowest priced golfers in the field yet. He is the 14th ranked golfer in the world. Uh, he's coming off a missed cut, so there's a little bit concern there, but I will be firing Danny Willett up in a lot of GPPs. I don't really know yet on his ownership. Um, I expect him to be somewhat popular for the same reasons I'm talking about, um, but with his poor recent form, I think it'll pe keep people off of him a little bit, and uh, he's definitely a golfer I want to take quite a bit of, especially knowing that he is a, a phenomenal value this week at 6700 near the min price and one of the best golfers in the field. So that's going to do it for us this week. Again, I apologize for the video being late. I am doing everything I can not to die over here because I feel like death. I have a crazy fever. 
I'm going back to sleep. We will catch you guys next time.